Well, the gang is all here. I am here with my wonderful ladies here in the doll competition. Hi, ladies. Hi. This has been so great, and Ann Coleman has arranged it for us to come into the competition during when it's closed so that we can have one-on-ones with you guys and the entire doll world. How great is that? So this morning we got through some of the early dolls in different categories, but today we are going to chat with April about some modern dolls, and then we're gonna chat with Robin about a couple of her favorite categories. And, and then when, when everyone else wants to chat, we're just gonna chat, so it's a doll chat, right? So come and pull up a chair and stay a while because are chatting dolls. You guys, have you been having such a great time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. And so the doll competition room has been one of the hottest spots of the entire show. It is uh, one of the, definitely the biggest draw, I think, of what's going on. And it is such a collaborative effort. And thank you so much for everything you've done. Well, it's been my pleasure. And we're so glad that you're here to film this so that it goes way far away from Baltimore, Maryland, and spreads across the planet basically. it does it spreads across the globe and if you and if you are watching and you'd like to support these women and 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 everyone that contributed to this competition please share the video because by sharing it other people see it and they can see something maybe they've never seen before and get involved which well, is what we love these competitions are rachel as you know an opportunity to see dolls that you never would necessarily yes. see any other place yes they come out of the woodwork they come out of the woodwork i love it and claire you're right here this is one of your first uh big events with ufdc that you've attended that's right it's only my uh my second event and um the reach the competition room sure is a big highlight for me and i was able to work with ann in um, helping to organize some of this and it was so much fun to see the different um, entries and uh, people were all excited about the whole um, event and entering their dolls, so it really is, um, it's it's an all well around happy event. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. happy. And Robin, how are you? Have you been shopping? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're... I went out of my comfort zone and I visited a modern doll artist Ooh. and made some orders earlier, so okay. yes. Good for you. I was you. even out of my normal zone of antique and wood. <laughs> Which you I know, think I'm going to be out of my normal zone of antique and wood this afternoon on this with Rachel. On our tour. We're on yes, our tour. We so. are. And it is. It, once, <laughs> once you step out of your comfort zone in, so. in dolls or in anything, you find that it really wasn't that hard, right? I mean, right, you get, right. and it's no. like, oh man, I should have done that before. So we're going to chat with April and we're going to, we're actually going to be in your comfort zone, April. So you're going to show us a couple of the things that you are really interested in. And that is modern dolls and hard plastics. Okay. And I think we also have and the April natural fibers speaking and on some of the most wonderfully inventive dolls so let's go. Yeah, let's take. Yeah, let's go look. So let's April, lead us down. So here we go. So we're gonna go with the invention. So here is the more modern 1950s. All kinds of really fun things happening right here. Where are we going to start? Well, why don't we start with the fun inventive ones, which are right here. So we have miscellaneous materials, which of seashells, which is a whole lot of fun. Look at that. Which, so it has to be made out of aquatic materials with the head constructed of sponges, seashells, lobsters, et cetera. Et cetera can be kind of like, hmm. Pretty much anything from under the sea. Love it. <laughs> and what I thought was really cool is because most of these were bought as souvenirs most likely or make, made this at, just at home. And they are I, so much fun. I love that one in the back. You see the hat with so many seashells on sort it. Sort of a Marie It really Burnett. reminds me kind of like Stephanie Blythe, what she does with the seashells and turned into little dolls. Totally. How much fun is that? I love that. And over here we have more miscellaneous materials. I'm seeing a lot of corn husks. I'm seeing some uh, walnut shells. Nut heads. Mm -hmm. Some nut heads, yes. It is so interesting to see the different styles and, and just uh, what, what the artists might have been thinking when they were using the materials. Look at this one back here that, that is in the blue. What is she made out of, do you think? She's corn cob. Looks like corn cob. That's actually my oh. doll. Oh, oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. I love and her. It's, it's a corn. It's a corn cob doll, yes. and um, you know she really wasn't that expensive, but she kind of spoke to me. And she's had this little corn cob underneath, and her same with her face, and then she has this bean for a nose. I don't think I she's just love her. Cute. 
she totally stands out to me. I absolutely love her. Cool. How much fun is that? So we have been asked several times to do the dress by the owner category. And this is again, so much fun because you can be a doll artist. <laughs> you, you can costume your own dolls. What do you guys think about this category? Well, we always think it's one of the most wonderful categories in the competitive exhibit because it's people doing things with their dolls that have a very strict requirement to match whatever the theme is that's been decided. And this, in this instance, it was activities associated with the um, area around Baltimore. So that includes uh, the shore as well as the mountains. Uh, and th these dolls represent various activities, fishing folk, um, somebody playing tennis, um, a lot of bathers. We have a number of bathing beauties. What jumps and, out at me looking and, at this category is you got the uh, variety and the diversity of some antiques, some antique reproduction, some vintage, and then on to modern. And, right. and the judging is so not weird. on the doll itself, but on the handiwork and the mm. skills mm -hmm. and the imagination of the uh, person who is uh, putting the outfit together. So I love this. We got the crabs and, and it's just, yes, the imagination is just so much fun. And I kind of like having to be kept to a certain theme. I think it can really help you be creative because you have to think, oh, okay, maybe that's not my favorite thing. And, but now I'm going to make it work and I'm going to do something cool. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure. I What's up with the pink flamingos in Maryland? Oh, that's a Baltimore thing. That's I think, a, yeah. yeah. From like, oh. Oh. I'm also well, seeing a lot of crabs, but I have yet I have yet to have a, a, a crab learning, cake while out here. I love this uh, sissy with the crab outfit. She's fantastic. Yeah. Which category are we going to look in next? Well, which one would you like to? Would well, you, you know, like our April viewers like a little bit of everything. Answer. So April, go, yes, let's talk about BJD. Some of the uh, okay. So BJD is kind of a, for us antique people. Well, I think if you can wait on this a moment, we have somebody coming to speak on the BJDs. Okay, yeah. then we're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna skip to my loo down, to, down, uh, down here. So let's see, we have vinyl mm -hmm. and of course Mattel Barbie. And then the Barbies, yeah, lots of Barbies. And they're all bubble cuts. Yes, that was the, which is a very oh, nice it has to be narrow, bubble cut. It's yeah, a, it's a narrow category. And what's really cool, I like, is everyone's in a different costume, <laughs> even though those two are very similar. I kind of like it when it when it has to be a bubble cut because then you can see a lot of variations of the same, mm -hmm. the same style. These dolls are going to speak to a lot of our viewers right here. The Miss Revlon is such an iconic doll. So iconic. So the, the blue ribbon winner I'm seeing, uh, she her condition is just absolutely pristine. She has her original tag. What else are the reasons that you guys think that she might have received a blue? April? I actually don't know. I mean, I was going to pick, I mean, I was following, but I wasn't following her in this part. <laughs> but probably because her color is perfect on her face. Yeah, her she condition. does have. Yeah, her condition yeah. is absolutely perfect. Her condition. She is just beautiful. Her hair's not even must. It's from 1856 to 1859. Yep. And again, they're all beautiful. It's a friendly competition, but it is, we can really, really learn about why one receives a blue ribbon over the next. You can just learn the reasons why it really helps us figure things out in the doll community. There we have with G.I. Joe. He's kind of a, he's definitely a fun guy. And with the G.I. Joes, we had two different eras. We had the original G.I. Joes on this side, and then a modern G.I. Joe from the 90s over on this side. That's interesting to know that. From first glance, that you can't tell. Mm -hmm. And then when you look up close, you really can. Who doesn't love Tony? Everyone has a soft spot for Tony. Did, did anyone here in the studio audience have a Tony doll? No? Never Everyone loves recently. Tony. <laughs> oh, well, see, I still, ha I, I mean, 
we have collectors of all ages oh, yeah. that have no, Tonys. Um, I didn't necessarily mean when they were manufactured. <laughs> that is funny. So beautiful. So we have one blue ribbon winner here, which again, she's just spectacular with her coloring. She just looks so, she's glowing. She just looks fresh out of the box. Costume well, this is all. where mm -hmm. these competitive exhibits, you're likely to see more pristine mm -hmm. dolls mm -hmm. from every age, uh, whether they're 50 years ago, right. 100 years ago, 150 years ago, 200 years ago. <laughs> And we love seeing the dolls that are pristine, but, it, but we also don't mind when they've been played with because that means that somebody enjoyed them and had fun too. Oh, yes. But it's a treat either way, both ways. So here, you, the- I, mm -hmm. You know what's been fun is, is as the competition's been going on, um, listening to the people who have entered them and getting some of the backstories. Yeah. And what, you know, why they entered them or what the history is. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's, that's, I think that's, a, that's fun. And they're all excited about it as well. Yeah, it don't, is. It is a lot of fun. And Robin, yeah. Mm -hmm. And don't be fooled. It is very hard when you're judging a category like this when they're all really nice. Mm -hmm. So right. that who's the pristine, who's the rarest, who's the most original, all has to that's factor in. Mm -hmm. And that's very hard. So it can be very difficult. Yeah. Makes and I'm sure the hard. judges do refer to each other too when they're having a tough time uh, making the call. You have to get several opinions sometimes. This is a really fun category. Ginny, look at these Ginnies, everybody. Again, we're here in the competition with Ann Coleman. This is the closest we've ever gotten in competition to see these dolls. And that's like about 15 of them. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot. And, and as somebody was saying, it was so nice because we restricted what they could wear. Yes, in a sports outfit. In the sports outfit. Sports outfit. Well, I personally love that scuba diver. Look, saying, look at her with mask. With her the fans. mask. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's so, it's so adorable. You know what? They're all kind of color coordinated too. Did you? They yeah. kind of look like they go together. Green, green, green. Yeah. 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 Just, just looking at that. But this one on the corner. What? What? What's this sport like? The well, I was cowboy just thinking riding, that because riding, riding, riding. Sport. I guess so, yeah. so cowboy riding. Sport. Okay, yeah. it is a sport. All right, all right. Maybe he was lassoing and rope going go with the rope. Yeah, yeah. 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 We'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, he won first place. He's adorable. <laughs> so here's the goatee fashion lady, which is always um, always a beautiful doll. Just gorgeous. And then we have post-1900 celluloid. And then French celluloid, which is very, very interesting. When you think of celluloid, you really don't think of French celluloid. Now, are, are these made in France? Very heavy industry of celluloid doll really? yes, in France. And a lot of the souvenir dolls in the 20th century were celluloid. I do find uh -oh. it interesting that the American category only had three entries, but the French. So you yeah. always had one, two, yeah. five. But the because entries. that comes back to the souvenir. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So great. Okay, so we're going to go across the room. And if you're tuning in, we are here with April, Anne, Claire, and Robin. And we are learning about... Uh, the, specific categories and doing kind of a wonderful walkthrough here in the competition room and we are having a, a fireside chat we're having a fireside chat with the doll ladies and um, just hearing their opinion and 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 chatting with them about uh, the dolls in the competition so it's really 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 fun and it's such an opportunity if you're enjoying this video please sure to share it so there's all these dolls that we get to look at and learn about. We went through here a little bit yesterday, um, or this morning rather, and we have Linda who's gonna teach us about the black cloth dolls. So we're not gonna talk about those right now. But on the other side of the room, Robin. We'll do a little bit of the composition paper mache. Let's do it. Antique. Look at these beautiful dolls, everybody. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, I love the Armand Marseille character children. Oh, see, Armand Marseille, they kind of, when you, sometimes when you think of Armand Marseille, you think of like the AM390, like right? But they, 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 they made some incredible character dolls. Yeah, look at the blue ribbon. The one that won the 
blue ribbon. I've never even seen that doll. Uh, what mold is that? Anybody know offhand? Um, you know, somebody who was here um, looking would try to, yeah, there's, there's a, I can't see it, but somebody did ask about that mold number. It's like A. It's such a neat doll. Star something. Or yeah. So Robin, you, your specialty is you like antique dolls, but you did buy a, a couple orders for some modern dolls today. But I, I typically like wood dolls. You typically like wood dolls and you have a wonderful collection. Did you enter any dolls in the competition this year? No, I did not. When I travel in those wood dolls from the late 17s to the early 1900s, just doesn't travel well. Yes, I understand. So, Been there. <laughs> so, yes. So, I think we we're going to cover this um, wood category that's commercial European because I think earlier they might have covered the Swiss wooden. Yes, we did not cover these. We stopped yeah. right here. So, these are great. And Pond Grants and San Reuter, they are very famous dolls and they are so incredibly well done. Just love them. Because if you look. Let's see the blue ribbon winner. There's three of the um, San Ruder dolls, correct? Am I re remembering correctly? It looks like, yeah. Yes, and one blue and two red. So if you look at the three of them, what stands out? Y'all help me. What stands out is what jumps out at you comparing the three? Because they're commercially made. And they're the three in the back, everybody. She just, look at those eyes. Look at those eyes looking at you, the lips. The eyes the and the lips are phenomenal. On the one with it, the one in the middle, the blue ribbon winner. Yeah, and just everything about her, her luminous wig and just her She's overall presence. Yes. Her just, just look at the, the quality of that one yeah. versus the two, even though the boy might be a little rare, the complete package mm -hmm. is she just mesmerizes you. Then the two, um, Y'all help me. Is it the donkeys? No, is it the, the, the mitten hand wood? Oh, pongrants. The pongrants. Oh the yes. The two of those, they're you know very similar, commercially made dolls. But look at the little ethnic one. Look at his eyes. He's just kind of like sad and crying, and with the hair, so much more um, accurately represented. He's for, just so for the type. Right. So, He's... hence why he probably got the third. And the other one got the fourth. <laughs> well, it's He's just, a little, you know, yeah. kind of a little rare. But the um, third place one here, she was quite unique. I don't think I know what she is. And if you look close, she's got a cloth body, but a wood head. So all these categories say the dolls, the way you enter them goes by the materials of the head. head. So she was appropriately fit for the category. And she is very pristine. Come on. I'm the right age, y'all all can look and tell about how old I am, that um, very 50s, 60s looking, very- Yeah, they're beautiful. Very nice and pristine. Definitely works of art. So Hitty, she is, uh, Hitty dolls are very popular. I think y'all covered that one earlier maybe, so yeah, let's skip straight to the um, Co composition. Papers. composition. Oh yeah, these yeah. are great. Being paper mache, the first one says it's a milliner model type on a typical leather body with wooden limbs, 1820 to 1875. So when you're looking at these, you kind of have to look at it and go, oh God, they're all old. The age is gonna be about the same. So let's look at the uh, condition of them, the rarity of them, mm -hmm. the hairstyles. So let's see, the blue ribbon winners. Let's look at their faces and their hairstyles and the quality. I bet that's why they've got those blue ribbons. Yeah, well, her face is just phenomenal. It just looks brand new. She's in incredible condition. She's in excellent condition. She is, and that looks like feet. her original clothing. She's just fabulous. And the one in the yellow at the back. That's another blue look ribbon the, winner. Another blue ribbon winner. And look at the um, curls around, painted oh, around yeah. her head. That hairstyle's fabulous. Outfit, totally, if it's not original, very old, very appropriate for the time. So, yes, and the one in the middle, green place, excellent, gorgeous doll. I'd love for it to be visiting all my paper mache's <laughs> in my collection. <laughs> Very nice outfit, and look at the green shoes, but there's two of them with the green feet. Mm -hmm. 
So that's what I find fascinating sometimes about these um, milliner models is the color of the shoes. Mm -hmm. Whether they're blue, orange, red, green. I think that's most of it. A black. And a black. A black yeah. And sometimes they've been so loved with and played with that they're no color. <laughs> and we love, we love them all, right? Yes, exactly. We absolutely love them all. So why did this Munich art doll right here receive an appreciation ribbon? Because... There's only a sibling one. did not turn up. Okay, so they have to have more than one. You have to have at least two dolls to judge on a category. category. Which is very sad because this, honestly, is probably one of my favorite dolls. She's, uh, she's out of this world they phenomenal. Are, uh, uh, yeah. So it's sad when we don't see people show up with, uh, with enough dolls that we have to give those pink. And of course, it, well, it, was, it was fascinating because I know that there are several collectors in this area who have Munich art dolls. And when I was putting the categories together, because you're trying to draw, this is a regional, you're trying to draw your dolls from collections in this particular area. Mm -hmm. And uh, both of them said, Oh, I would have entered my dolls if I had only known what? that there was a category to enter. And I said, oh, but I put these this category in specifically with you in mind. Oh, <laughs> bummer. Well, hopefully they see this. I'm going to challenge you. Yes, ma'am. go back to the sales room, have you filmed in the sales room yet? We have. Mm -hmm. There is two Munich art dolls in that sales room that are mm. excellent. I'll tell you You're off not going to tell me which booth? I was going to tell you. I can either tell you which booth. <laughs> so you can go film them. Marion, as you come in the door. Okay. She has one in her booth, and so does Becky and Andy Oram. Oh, well, so then we're going to have to go front. check. How cool. great. So show the folks at home two more. More about the Munich art dolls. Yes, maybe Andy would talk to us about so, them. Yes. That would be great. So we have the composition scoodles, and we did, we actually just had another expert walk in the door. Marcel, Hi, how are you? Good. Yes, have you good. been having a great time at the show? I have been. I have been, absolutely. So you came to teach us about something. What is your category? Um, hard plastic and ball jointed dolls this year. Hard plastic and ball jointed dolls. So, and you did a uh, program yesterday. No, tomorrow. <laughs> oh gosh, tomorrow. Okay. Hasn't happened yet. But she done a seminar. I did a workshop. Morning. It was okay. A so it was a, a workshop. Yes. I, I saw you on the roster somewhere. So yes. how did that go? It went well. There's there's a lot of caffeine involved, but we're doing good. You go, girl. <laughs> and she couldn't take orders. I walked by and that was the prettiest little thing I've ever seen that she's made. And I was like, We can work something out. I was like, Marcel, take orders. And she was like, uh, No. <laughs> Yep. So I, unless you want to continue the composition, I think I we can know. march right over to. Yeah, we can march right over. Yep. That's right. right. Yep. Let's let's, let's check it out. If you guys are here, to see more. Yes, if you're here with us, French? please share yeah. the video. Okay. I'm sorry. That's, oh, no, I was laughing at Robin. She said these ugly French. No, I oh. said these lovely Oh, I thought French. you said these ugly. I was like, no. what? <laughs> I thought you were making a joke. No, that's something sometimes, about my dog. You know, sometimes the ugliest ones, ones are the most Are the most beautiful and interesting. Yes. That's for sure. So, Marcel, do you want to get in on the other side? Of the I can do that. Yeah, just lift up the. We covered the Jenny. I know the drill. We did cover Jenny's. Yeah. Okay. We good. didn't. We didn't get down deep in some but, of these. But the, there right. may be yeah. things that Marcel can. Well, this on, this category, sure. unfortunately, one of the dolls was not a Margaret Face Goaty Lady. She was a Goaty Lady, but a Sisset. So we only had one doll left in the category to judge, which is always unfortunate. And they're both great dolls. They just mm -hmm. this one doesn't belong in the category. Okay. Well, that's good to know and for our viewers to see that, though. Yes, absolutely. And, and I might say here, interject, that in this morning's um, gathering, we went over in detail about the qualifications yes. and what how to, the judges have to read the category yeah. card to make sure that everything fits. And this is another instance of a doll not quite fitting what the category is calling for. But now that but they know, she wonderful. will do it next time. Absolutely. Yeah. And, exactly. again, exactly. and we had quite a few on the other side of the room that we just kind of skimmed so, over. So we yes, did. And very it's very hard sometimes. Yeah. I always try and stress, it's not a bad doll, it's just in the wrong category. Right. You know, there are a couple, 
There are at least two more dolls down here that we also disqualified that are fantastic. You know, they just don't fit the category. Right. Um, you said you already did Jimmy's? We did. Oh, okay. I will move on to the Sandra well, Seuss. Was there any uh, spe special point that we might not have picked up on, Marcel? Um, I don't know, but you this... commented that the blue ribbon looked like a rodeo cowboy, maybe sports. Well, sports, yeah. we're, we're, we're taking cowboy as sports. Yeah. Yes. That, well, that works, cowboy, uh, but having lived in Texas. <laughs> this is an earlier doll, earlier painted eye, but still hard plastic. There were painted eye composition toodles, and then there were the painted eye hard plastics. So that immediately makes this doll older. I could see how that might be a point of contention, though, because being a, a cowboy point. is more like a trade, whereas... Uh -huh. Well, they're sort of two different things. Because yes. In, in a rodeo. In a, yeah, okay. It, it, so, if, yeah, if he was in a rodeo, then that is a sports yeah. competition. So, yeah. you know. So I said he had to ride. We and have tennis ride. players. We have skiers. We have. Uh, yes, we like what's, the snorkel what's equipment. The we love the snorkel the equipment. The horse. Uh, equestrian. Do you have an equestrian? I love her pants. Look at her pants. Yes, her pants are lovely. Good job. They are adorable. Yes. If you need me to, to yes. move any little papers out of the way, I can do that. Did you check out the scuba diver? Yes, yes we just we just love her snorkel. I had snorkel. never seen that mask before. It and is the also, cutest thing. You see, we also have a doll from the 80s or 90s here that got entered, and that's fine. But obviously, her rarity is not as much as any of the 40s, 50s dolls on the table. Right. Right. So Sandra Sue, we actually talked with doll Dr. Sandy and she showed us how to restring one about oh, two hours ago, which was great. Great, yes. Okay, well we had an actual Sandra Sue expert in here with me on this. Um, and Peggy Melhouse, I'm sorry. Um, too many words today. But this one in the center in the yellow dress is a very special Sandra Sue because she was dressed by Mary Hoyer. Oh wow. Which is rare in and of itself, as well as, you know, notable in the doll world. Mary Hoyer is is famous in her own right. Um, and then the outfit on the right, which is some sort of beach cover up. It's so cute. Is Whatever also it is. Super duper rare. It looks rare. She looks like one of those hostess snowballs. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then these two are both, you know, perfect, all complete, not quite as rare as the others. And the contention was that the one in the uh, red check had been redressed. She's still lovely, but her dress is a little, a little longer. Floor length gowns in that era wouldn't have gone past the four. Okay. So it's a little long on her. It's not quite up to the usual Sandra Sue level, but it's completely appropriate. And then the Tonys. The Tonys are lovely. Um, obviously, on the in the back right, we have an American character Tony from about 1958. That's one of my areas. Um, but the category was hard plastic ideal Tony. What happened is the company that had the Tony home perm changed. They had allowed the sponsorship to go to ideal in this era with the hard plastic dolls. And then in 57 or 58, American character got the rights to make the Tony doll. So that's when you get the high heel doll in the corner. These, you know, all mostly late 40s to early to mid 50s, but we've got a range of conditions and a range of outfit rarities, which I think is great to discuss. For instance, this, this dress, and we know it is an original Tony dress because it is tagged in the back. Oh, wow. Yes. And it's, I guess, sort of a princess gown and not, not typical. The more typical outfits you'd find them in are these with the rickrack or the floral trim or the little girl school dress. Those are all very, very typical. This one is not so much, which is part of why I examined it to check for the tag. Also, she is just very, very pristine and her color is good and her hair is perfect. Mm -hmm. She's just glowing, she's you know, wonderful. It's, it's very difficult to pick which one deserves the blue ribbon in any of these categories. But we so, did discuss earlier that her painting and color mm -hmm. stands out above yes. the rest. Yes, oh, it, de it definitely does. You, it yes. definitely does. You know, a blue this one has been a little bit loved 
and has, is that, that's the one, no, this is the one with the replacement tag. Um, that might, yeah, that's a real tag. But, you know, she's, she's been loved by her little mommy, and that's, that's fantastic, you know. I would love to have my mom's dolls from this era. But it's, it's nice to see the range of heights and the range of hair colors. You know, when I was a kid, all the dolls were blonde. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it is, it is right. nice to know this Yeah, no, the, the, that redhead in the corner is just beautiful. Yes, well, yes. Well, Marcella must be a little bit older than you because all the ones around me were brown-headed. I know. <laughs> what about you, April? A lot of strawberry blondes and, and platinum blondes. Mm -hmm. The okay. only brunette <laughs> doll I had too, until yeah. I was about eight was my mom's childhood walker. So. We also had a G.I. Joe category, which isn't usually as much my area, but we only, we only had three. This guy, in, in addition to, it's, it's written on the tag that he's marked 96, so that automatically right. makes him a generation newer than the other two. And then we looked at completeness of the outfit and age of the doll. So we have some more experts trickling in here. We just had Kathy Turner and Linda Edward join us. Hello, ladies. Hi. We are talking live with Marcel, and she has been taking us through some of the 50s dolls and the more modern dolls. I didn't judge Revlons, but I could speak to them. Yes, let's let's do Revlons, and then we're going to hop, okay. skip, and a jump over to probably the, we'll do the black dolls with Linda, and then um, the cloth dolls, and then China with uh, Kathy Turner. Yay! Okay, so let's chat Revlon. I enjoyed this because this was an it was specifically the 18 inch size. Often when there's a Revlon category, size isn't specified. You get the 15, the 18, 20, 22, whatever. But I like that this is a range of what was available in that same size range. And you have a good cross section of the typical outfits. Obviously this is a rarer outfit, as is this one. This, I forget the name of that one. This one was Queen of Diamonds. I have it in a 22 inch at home. And this is, Cherry's Jubilee. They were all named after the Revlon lipstick colors. Oh, fun. Did not know that. Yes. And this, is, this was also, I believe, a Cherry's dress. It will probably say on the tag. As we breezed through that while ago, Marcel, we um, noted that in that category as well, look at the color. Yes. Again. Absolutely. The blue ribbon versus the other. Yeah, absolutely. And even, you know, they, they had more than one mold for the 18 inches. Some have a little bit of a squarer face than others, but even looking at these two, which, you know, were, are the, the, same, the same dress in a slightly different print, and looking at the color difference. Just a wonderful. And, yeah. If you guys are here live with us, we're here in the dolly cam with all these ladies. How cool is this? And we have the room to ourselves. We're in the competition and we are chatting dolls and it is so much fun. So share the video, ask your questions. Now's the time because to have all of these bright and, and, and colorful and smart ladies in one room, it's a treat, believe me. So we're gonna chat next with Linda, who we chatted for the very first time on camera last night, and it was so much fun. Linda, you are see, and she is just she just crawls right under and just gets gets to business. <laughs> she's like our kind of <laughs> she's our kind of lady. So start us off. Well, we had some really interesting cloth dolls show up this time, as we always do. But one of the exciting things for me was to see this category, which was on cloth K to Cruz pre-1940, and we ended up seeing an extremely rare doll, which is the Keita Cruz doll that was licensed and made by Cameron Reinhardt for a very short period wow. with those interesting ball-jointed knees, which Keita Cruz hated. Ball-jointed knees? Do it very I've long. never seen that. So it's a doll that was never really produced in great quantities because she was not happy with the design, but of course today it's a rarity love it. and really exciting bring, to see. Bring them all to us. Of course, she is in good company with her fellows. Um, love them. Don't tell anybody, but if this doll's missing later, it might be at my house. It's a fabulous doll. We so had great. some great black cloth categories this year too. And in this category, of course, I was instantly delighted to see a black Chase doll, Martha Chase, Rhode Island. Stunning. Um, early 20th century, a wonderful example. 
and just as we started to work through, because of course in competitive you look at every dial, mm -hmm. you check every detail, you're weighing them against each other. And as we started to move along the table, we came across this example of a wonderful, wonderful black male doll uh, from Brazil. We often see the female version of that doll. You see the Bahia lady, That's, right? This is the gentleman mm -hmm. who should this be dating her. This is the gentleman. <laughs> we love him. Yes, it's so, her gentleman caller. And the detail is just amazing. Yeah, he's phenomenal. Right down to the fingernails on his hand, etc. So it's just you don't a great doll. Special detail. One of, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> he, he has a lot of details and we're not going to Yes, he like does. <laughs> um, one of the interesting things that happens in competitive is that we all learn from each other, even in the judging portion of the event. But we had an instance here where a person entered their doll, did not know what it was, and we were very happy as judges to be able to tell them what their oh, doll was. Oh, my goodness, So yes. it's an exchange of information besides just a fun weighing of, of, of attributes. And of course, who is it? Well, it's a lovely Nora Wellings yes. doll with glass eyes. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. And you can tell, but I mean, I, the face is so fabulous. Yes, lots and lots of detail there again. And of course, a great pull toy with that Bruckner head on it. For you guys as experts and people in the doll community, isn't one of your funnest times when you can tell somebody like what their what their treasure is? It's kind of like yes. that yeah. aha yes. moment when you see something and you know, and you can tell them and they're so happy to find out. Or point out yes. one so. special thing about characteristic that maybe they didn't notice. They knew what the doll was, but they didn't realize it had the rare earlobe or whatever it is. Right, you know? it's in those moments we just feel like we're and winning. We are say, being doll geeks, let's face it. Yes, and then when they say, oh, this is my first UFDC or my yes. first doll competition <laughs> or my first convention, and then my heart goes to race and yes. it's pat. Yes. Well, as I said earlier today, it was a learning experience because as Linda's been saying, enter the dolls, even though you aren't sure that it's in the right category or whatever, because you're learning and because you're learning, everybody else is learning That's at right. the same time. That's, That's right. the, the point down of the exhibit. Bit. That's the point of the exhibit is to share information and to, to learn from each other. I have entered dolls that I knew nothing about in hopes that someone would tell me what it was. Right, which is such a, such a treasure when that happens. Look at these wonderful dolls. I just love them all. These are just a nice category of black handmade with flat faces, embroidered features. We ended up with a wide variety of things here. The detail on this gentleman is especially nice. If you can see his eyes, the threads were gathered in the middle to expose the white fabric behind the eye wow. to give him um, the whites of his eyes. So it's a, it's a great oh, deal. That's and his hair is knitted fabric. He so the ingenuity that comes into some You're of these dolls. You're saying it's a reverse application yes. of the eyes? Yes, basically, yes. Wow. And, and that knitted stockinette hair is just knocks me out. <laughs> But the detail on them and the ingenuity that goes into these handmade categories mm -hmm. is what it's just is sweet. always so amazing. How can you not appreciate somebody made something oftentimes out of just whatever they could find, scraps or something Make in dues. the field even, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they made something wonderful for their yeah. loved one. Yeah. So great. Linda, could you help me even understand the one with the red ribbon, the second place? The second place? This yeah. is um, one of those women's initiative projects that from Africa, and um, it's one of the great things about doll collecting is the way that women are empowered through doll making. And it's a story that has been with us for 200 years now of women's empowerment. And this is a modern example of that in action. And where the money goes back to the community. Yes, that that the they, make, they well, learn well, to I've make a product. In Namibia they at one of these uh, women's initiative uh, vending places where they have their sewing machines, their singer, uh, portable sewing machines and the pile of fabric that they just pick the pieces from and it's a social event for them it's a money-making event for them they're they've got the kids the preschool kids the there at the same and the time. Kid, kids are picking out the fabric the color of the fabric to yeah put. so it, it's a wonderful experience for everybody and, uh, and it, it really became for me, a beehive moment because there was so much energy in that little row of um, what we would call um, uh, tents. Mm -hmm. And then we as collectors get to support that through our hobby that we love by buying the doll, 
-hmm. and showing it to others and promoting the project. So it's a win, 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 win. Yeah. <laughs> I love, don't you just love a win, 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 win? Beautiful. So thank you so much, Linda. Yes, and let's look, let's look at the um, cloth ones right here on the other side. And then we're going to go over to China. Not China the place, but China heads. Uh, Kathy Turner is just taught a, did a wonderful program upstairs. So here we go again. We have black handmade flat face or drawn uh, or painted features not from any known commercial pattern post-1900. And again, you're getting a wide range of product that's in front of you because, of course, handmade can encompass the small cottage industry. It can encompass the person who made one of a kind. I'm so glad you're focusing in on that little doll. We always make a point to read the cards that the people who enter put down because there are scraps of information you don't get anywhere else. And we were tickled to death to see that this doll's wig was made with clippings from her poodle's hair. Oh, <laughs> well, I can certainly appreciate that. And that is the first poodle hair wig I've ever seen on a doll. A true <laughs> poodle hair wig. So she's rarity had, was a factor in her, in her, her ribbon. Did you do something about poodle hair start lunching today? Well, that's a whole other story. <laughs> But again, it's, it's the detail that goes yeah. into these, the ingenuity of the maker, the use of fabric that was at hand, et cetera. And yeah. This is what we love about these types of categories. We're at pre-1900, and this one is from Massachusetts, it says, and the, yeah. she's incredible. She really is. Again, just mucho, mucho detail. I, just I'm wonderful. resisting the urge to pick her up and hug her, but Linda, if you look you at the... Linda, you pick her up because she's mine. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, look good. At the so we can see the back of her Hair head. ribbon on her hair all the way around wow. that silk ribbon. And Simple embroidery that's just so incredibly effective. You know, the wonderful thing... And all thing, the details. Look at her gloves. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I have to tell you that she's a mother, and she has a son and a daughter, and the daughter is blessed by having a doll. Ah, a doll with a doll. What could be better? Don't we love a doll with a doll? <laughs> the wonderful thing that I love about the, the black um, cloth dolls, and black dolls in general, but the black cloth dolls, is they tell such a t knowing story that is not forced. It's not violent it's it's a peaceful story that they're telling and it is it's so poignant a story about love and acceptance right yeah, exactly and, yep. and use it again empowerment again yeah. Yeah. yeah and these are just wonderful we're going to end here look with at the, the wonderful claw. mouth of miss yeah, though with those beaded teeth <laughs> she's just i just love her yeah she's got beads on her teeth and all, all the way down she's she's a wonderful size she's got that dress and those wonderful feet look it's just face. so many ways to go Oh yeah, my gosh, the detail of the embroidery. I mean, look at the mouth and everything, and even little earrings. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just so great. Sammy Odin is watching all the way from France. Hi, Sammy. Hi, Sammy. Hi, Sammy. Hi, Sammy. You're here with your doll friends. We wish you were here, though, right? Yes. Hi, Sammy. Sammy would be teaching us. Hi, Sammy. Hi, Sammy. Yes. So thank you so much, Linda. That was awesome. So now we're going to talk to Kathy Turner. Let's hike on over. Hi. Yes. So Kathy, you you like a lot of things, but you I you do. specialize in the chinas. Yes, uh, forgive me if my voice might be raspy. I just finished talking for an hour straight about chinas, but here we go again. <laughs> you know, I might do a Linda. <laughs> you know, I love it. We just get in and, jump in, and do it. jump in and do it. So here we are in the china section. Let's start with the first category then. Let's do it. So we have toffling type. We have toffling type. These are the type that they actually were imitating the Japanese Ichimatsu dolls mm. that came over, uh, the early ones from the mid-1800s, and they saw that body type where they had the midsection, and the Germans, industrious and individuals that they were, they copied it wow. and uh, came and imitated the body form and these made these babies, basically, or young children. And we had these two superb examples that we really could not parse, which was better than the other, and we awarded them both blue ribbons. They are phenomenal examples. The clothing, everything was wonderful about them. They are fantastic, and you do not find those. Not they are hard often. to find, yeah. And then in this category, this was a big puzzle. Now it, does, it looks like it's a category that would be obvious that this young lady here in front of me would be the blue ribbon winner, which she is, but the conundrum was that in this category we were supposed to be looking at dolls that had molded accessories, and this doll, she has, I don't know, I can't touch her, but she has a green headband, but it is not molded. 
So we decided to make an exception. It's not molded. It's How not is molded. It not molded. It's just painted okay. green. Oh, okay. It's not in relief. In relief, right? Right. Okay. So an exception was made there, and another exception was made because this is also supposed to be pre nineteen ten, and this later Hertwig example dates from probably the 19 teens. We decided because if we eliminated both of those, we wouldn't be able to judge the remaining doll. Which was mm -hmm. properly which, categorized. Which properly, so we decided to give latitude, given that this is a regional, to the other two dolls and we were able to be inclusive and judge them all fairly. Well, and as long as you have rationale, I think that is the best decision. Yes, we think so too. And we want to be able to encourage people who, to bring their dolls. These per people have toted these things across to the share, country, of course. And we want to recognize that. Right. And then we had some wonderful male China dolls in here, all of whom were so wonderful that we spent many, many, many minutes debating which one was elevated above the other. And you can never overlook the smallest dolls. Because we award the blue ribbon to this fellow. He is just a complete package when it comes to originality. And that is why he was recognized. And he's about three and a half, four inches tall. I, I'd, say, I'd say about four and a half. Maybe. And look at his wispy hair. Even in that small size, that right. kind of detail. So great. It was really amazing. And then we had uh, some Emma Clear dolls, it's very specific category. Not only was it specific to the maker, Emma Clear, but it was specifically just George and Martha Washington. Now, <clears throat> I happened to notice during judging that, fancy that, George has the same lace as Martha. They look like they're a pair. Do you think maybe it might have been a couple that entered them? Possibly. Linda? <laughs> Oh, fancy that. So, but you really can't, couldn't separate George and Martha. No. So we, we felt they were on par with each other. And uh, Martha number two over here um, had qu not quite the same level of dress, though she's, of course, a wonderful example Beautiful. as well. And these were uh, original white. Is it Martha? It says right here, Martha Ayers design, wasn't it? Yes. The George and uh, Martha dolls. The, that were made for, by Emma Clear. Now, now this is uh, a 1940s era Ruth Gibbs China dolls. And this is not an area that I had a great deal of depth in. And this is, this is what you do on a judging team. When you don't have an area of depth, you're very lucky if there's somebody in the room or nearby who does. And lo and behold, we had a clerk on our team who had written an article on Ruth Gibbs and was like the specialist in Ruth Gibbs. Awesome. So I kind of went, my dear. <laughs> exactly. And that's what we do in the doll world, yes. right? Yes. And she was able to tell me, this is where judges get educated if you're open to it, that this doll right back here is the earliest Ruth Gibbs doll on the table. She has a type of hand. Her hands are more detailed than the later spoon hands on the other dolls, and she has even a bracelet on one wrist. So that's why she was singled out, and I would not have known that mm -hmm. but for having consulted with this other uh, person that was nearby. And she helped us to parse the remainder of the dolls on this table. Uh, it's it was so wonderful. cool to see that doll because she doesn't look like the typical Ruth Gibbs face. No, this looks typical, no. this looks typical, yeah. and then the one in the back, you wouldn't tell offhand that that was. Correct, correct. And of course, the other thing about judging is we're not supposed to be considering packaging boxes. So even though one would automatically think, oh, box doll, wow, mm -hmm. so much better. We are not supposed to be considering that. Well, that's interesting. Because I would think that that would give me a leg up. It would in the sales room. Right. <laughs> but not necessarily in, in, competition. in competition. So that's as far as I went in the judging no, category, and we had a great Look time. Look at that. Well, we, there, are, there are so many dolls here, and we just had such a great time. I am here with this wonderful group of ladies. You're back in the dolly cam. <laughs> We're gonna say we're gonna say bye. We have a lot of people tuning in uh, from across the globe. We wish you were here, but hey, we're all in the dolly cam together. So 
thank you. Share the video and we hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, ladies. Bye-bye.